G'day guys, welcome back to another video. So, there's something that's been bugging me for quite a while now, and I think I've finally like worked out what it actually is. It's with Gan again. Yeah, I'm talking smack about Gan again. There's just something that is just, uh, they could be doing so well, but they just need to be doing a little bit better. And I'm gonna talk about what that is. So first off, I don't know if you've noticed, but Gan started out as a company that only focused on speed cubing and speed cubing as a sport in competition. So the only cubes they ever made were stickered three by threes. You would have seen these before, like you can still get stickered three by threes obviously, but they never made any stickerless three by threes until it was legal in competition. If you didn't know, stickered cubes were the only thing that were legal in competition because there was reasons with uh, turning it and being able to see multiple colors at once and that sort of thing. Um, however, they changed that a couple of years back and pretty much instantly, as soon as they did, GAN started bringing out their stickerless cubes and these were great. Everyone loved these. I remember the first one was the 354M which was like a smaller cube and everyone was begging Gan to please make a bigger version. And then they finally did and now all their cubes are stickerless, obviously. Sometimes they don't even make sticky cubes anymore. Like the Skube and the Pyraminx and the Megaminx, they all come in only stickerless puzzles because everyone likes the stickerless puzzles now. Most people use them, even Felix does, and that's fine. So they originally started heavily based around competing. And they also focused on only their 3x3s. Now, I don't have an issue with them, you know, branching out with Skube and 4x4, 2x2, Megaminx, Pyraminx, whatever comes next, maybe a gang clock, who knows. What I do have an issue with is them making cubes that can't be used in competition. Now, this might seem like, you know, counterintuitive because why would you make a cube that you can't use in competition? And that's what I ask myself. But there is WCA and non-WCA puzzles. Obviously, some puzzles are used in competition and others aren't. For instance, like, I don't know, mirror blocks cube or a Rex cube or a dino cube or, you know, a giga tup mix. They're not puzzles that are used in WCA, but they're still competition-ish puzzles, if that makes sense. So they can be solved and they can be used in a competition that isn't in the WCA. However, GAN started making cubes that aren't in either. I don't have any because I don't see the point in buying them but they're completely the same color all the way around, and they're also tiny. Now this isn't one of the GAN cubes, but this is kind of what I'm talking about. It's a tiny little cube that's about, well it is, it's half the size of a regular 3x3. So you could fit two of these on a 3x3. Which the annoying thing is that they're one colored and they turn amazingly. I don't know why they bothered. Like you've probably all seen the little uh, keychain GAN that you can get which turns really well and everyone says it's the best mini cube whatever that's fine that's fine if it has the colors but these ones are weird colored little trinket thingies and they're all weird colors too like why would you want this color that's beside the point what really annoyed me and what really sparked me to make this video is this cube now I don't exactly know what it's called it's called some I don't know centennial whatever but what you can't use that in competition. You can't have logos around the side. It's got like this colors on the side so you can technically solve it like a three by three, but you can't use it in a competition. Now, you, you're probably thinking like, why am I getting so mad that you can't use these puzzles in competition? They're just for decoration. But it's sort of because like GAN built themselves on this competition pedestal and they made it so that all their cues could be used in competition to sort of gain trust, if you know what I mean. But if that's the way they want to go, that's fine. They've also released these new ones that are like, I don't know, they're called flowers or something. They have like these really cool internals. It actually looks pretty sick, but I don't know. I just I don't see the point. They're sort of losing their mojo a bit. And one final thing that I've kind of noticed that in my last video about GAN that I made called The Problem with GAN, I talked about how they were the apple of cubing, which, you know, in some sense they are. But the problem with calling them that is it's sort of losing one of uh, Apple's biggest marketing campaigns, which is not bringing out a product unless it's already been refined and proven to be successful by other companies. So an example of this is they were one of the last companies to remove the fingerprint reader and they're still yet to move, remove the, uh, the notch at the top of the phone. That's because other phones still haven't done that and they're not going to jump in and make some crazy new invention that may not work. They only jump into things when they know it's been proven to work very well. Which is fine. It's a good marketing strategy because it means that people trust them and they know that they're not going to break. I mean, obviously they do 
you know, sometimes fall apart and things can be issues, but whatever. Gam, on the other hand, has started doing weird innovative things that usually turn out okay, but they're usually the first people to do it, which is cool, it's innovative, whatever. But it's not the best marketing campaign for a company that wants to be that sort of prestige high level thing that gives people confidence in their new puzzles. That's why people like iPhones, because they're confident that they know they're going to be successful and they're going to work with all of the latest tech that has been refined over the years. Yes, the GAN 11 M Pro was successful with their core magnets and, you know, they also transferred that over to their SKU and their Pyramids. But there's been rumours of some other weird things they're going to start doing with adjustable tensions and all that sort of thing. And I feel like they're sort of losing that a little bit. I think they need to slow down, wait for other companies to do that, and then implement it when they feel right that it's actually going to be successful in all markets. But anyway, again, there's nothing wrong with innovation and we all want to see all our puzzles, you know, getting better and improving over time, which is good. It's just GAN, I think, themselves need to rethink their marketing strategy a little bit and just stick to what they were known for being the three by threes that improved over time that were great in competition and everyone loved them. Thanks for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.